Yesterday we defined momentum in two ways. One was kind of the everyday way, the way that we think of momentum, and then one was the technical, scientific definition of momentum. Who can give me either one of those definitions? I don't care which one. Who can give me either one of those definitions that we talked about yesterday? Let's uh, ask uh, Kirsten. Can you give me one of those two definitions? Good. So the product of the mass and velocity. That's the real definition. That's the technical definition of momentum, the product of mass and velocity. But really, that leads us to the everyday understanding of momentum, which is how hard it is to stop an object, right? How hard it is to stop an object. Why is it hard to stop something? Because it's either heavy and or it's got uh, lots of velocity. It's either heavy or it's moving fast or a combination of both. We saw these two pictures yesterday. And we use these two pictures to distinguish between momentum and inertia. If momentum is how hard it is to stop something, inertia was how hard it is to change the motion of something, which sounds a lot the same. And in fact, sometimes it can be the same. If you've got a train moving down the tracks, it's got both inertia and momentum. It's hard to stop, but it's also hard to change the motion of it. But if you've got a train that's at rest in the train station, it's got no momentum. It's not hard to stop. It's already stopped. But it is hard to change the motion of it because it's heavy. So momentum is dependent upon mass and velocity. And inertia, we said, is dependent only upon mass. Good. So similar, but not quite the same thing. Momentum is a vector quantity, which means it has both magnitude and direction, right? From Despicable Me. Remember uh, Vector, the, the villain in Despicable Me? No? All right, I'll show, you, I'll show you that clip sometime. And the equation, of course, that we use to describe momentum really just comes from the definition. The momentum, a small p, a lowercase p, with a little half arrow over it indicating that it's a vector quantity, is equal to the mass times the velocity, m times v. The scalar times the vector always gives us a vector. Let's take a look at some units here. The units that we almost always use for mass would be what? Kilograms. Whether we're talking about momentum or any other quantity, it's almost always going to be mass. Or sorry, almost always going to be kilograms. Velocity is almost always going to be meters per second. Good, Daniel. Yesterday, we didn't do this. Okay, yesterday, I didn't do a couple practice conversions with you. But we're going to have to do that fairly often. So let's go through a couple of those now. Let's say we've got a mass of 20 grams. We want to convert that to kilograms. What are we going to do? What's the conversion factor, Daniel? Good. Divide by 1,000. Now, if you're anything like me, I always get mixed up. Do I divide? Do I multiply? Which one is it? And I mean, when you're talking about grams and kilograms, it tends to be fairly straightforward which one you do. But sometimes it gets a little bit confusing. Divide or multiply or whatever. Here's what I do. Sounds silly, but sometimes I just guess. But then I always check my guess. It's okay to guess as long as you check your guess. Let's say that I didn't remember that I have to divide by 1,000 here to get kilograms. Let's say I knew it was 1,000, but I was, is it multiply or is it divide? Let me guess. I'm going to guess that I multiply by 1,000. So 20 grams multiplied by 1,000 is 20,000. Is 20 grams seriously equal to 20,000 kilograms? It doesn't make any sense, right? So it's OK to, check, to guess as long as you check your guess to see if it makes sense. In this case, it would make sense. So Daniel must be right. It must be divided by 1,000, which gives us 0 0.020 kilograms. Another way to do it, another way to do it, on your data sheet, they tell you that a kilogram is 10 to the 3. That means a gram would be 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. So if we want to, all we have to do is tack on a 10 to the minus 3 on the end of it and not even worry about moving the decimal place over. It doesn't really matter. That's a pretty common conversion that we have to do. Probably a more common conversion that we have to do is something like 90 kilometers per hour to meters per second. You guys remember the shortcut from Physics 20 on this one? 
What's the number? What's that magic number? Yeah. No, but you're close. Something point six. Three point six. What do we do? Multiply by three point six or divide by three point six? Oh, that's a tough one, eh? Let's make it a hundred kilometers per hour, actually. Just easier to do the math. 100 kilometers per hour. Let's guess. It's multiplied by 3.6. All right. 100 meters per second. Sorry, 100 kilometers per hour multiplied by 3.6 gives me 360 meters per second. Is that reasonable? That's three and a half football fields in one second. 350 meters, 360 meters in one second. This car that's traveling down the highway is traveling. Is it reasonable that a car travels three and a half football fields in one second? Is it reasonable that a car is traveling 20 meters per second faster than the speed of sound? No. So it's not multiplied by 3.6. It must be divided by 3.6. It's okay if you guess wrong the first time. It really is. As long as you've got it in your head to check that guess. So we're going we're gonna to divide that by 3.6. I think it works out to be something like 27.7 meters per second, we divide it by 3.6. A quarter of a football field per second, that makes a lot more sense than three and a half football fields per second, right? You know what? Listen, sometimes you guys are better at stuff like this than I am. Okay? You may not need to check your guess sometimes, but you should do it anyways. You may be really good at remembering whether it's multiplier or divide, but you know what? Check it anyways. Okay? See if it makes sense anyways. Yep. Uh, sorry, that was supposed to be 100 kilometers per hour, yeah. Yeah, sorry. No, you're right, though. Get it? Well, let's do a nice, fairly easy, although there is one little thing you got to watch out for in this question, example here. Uh, there's two parts to this. We want to calculate the momentum of the car driver system in this guy in the bumper car, and we want to draw the vector, the velocity vector, and the momentum vector. I don't really want to do that. Okay, that's not the point of this question for us today. I want to calculate the momentum of the car driver system. Now, in Physics 20, you're always taught the first thing you should do is write down the givens. That's not quite true. Almost true. Really, the first thing we want to do is just look at the question. Look at the question. Get a, get a big picture view of the question. Understand what the question's telling us and asking. Read the question. And then, let's write down the givens. So we've got this, this guy in a bumper car traveling at 3 meters per second. We want to find a momentum. It's a pretty straightforward concept, right? There's nothing real tricky to this. Okay, there's no crazy, crazy reading for this. Let's look, at, let's look at our givens here now. We've got a speed, or a velocity, I should say, of 3 meters per second to the east. Anything else we have here? Is there anything else that we have given to us in this question? Oh, sorry? Yeah. East is positive. They have already done me the favor of defining that for me. Okay. But by rights, okay, whenever I see a question, if it's not already defined for me, I should probably write in east is positive. Sometimes we take a bit of a shortcut and we just assume that east is positive. And that's okay. Okay, that's okay if we're using a standard um, sign convention of east positive or north positive, but by rights, we probably should write it in. What else we got? Something that's staring us right in the face there. Yep. Mass is what? Good. 180 plus 70. Mass is 250 kilograms. Now notice, I'm circling the givens, and then I'm just writing down the letter beside them as opposed to writing them down like we do in physics 20. Uh, v is equal to 3 meters per second. M is equal to 250 kilograms. Either way is OK. You're going to see a lot of multiple choice questions in physics 30. Because we see a lot of multiple choice questions, sometimes we tend to take a bit of a shortcut. I don't want you to take big shortcuts. Okay? I want you to do things the way that we always do them. But one thing that you can do to save yourself a little bit of time, if you wish, is write down your givens the way that I have right here. Okay? Circle them and identify them. It's a little bit quicker than writing them down on the side like this. It doesn't really matter. All right. We're looking for the momentum here. We're looking for P. So it's pretty straightforward here at this point. P is equal to M times V. The mass is 250 kilograms. 
and the velocity is three velocity is three point zero meters per second. Seven hundred fifty kilograms meters per second. Daniel's already defined east as positive, so the fact that we got positive means it's to the east. All those people that say physics theory is hard, like, this is easy, isn't it? It's a cinch. Or if the rest of physics theory is this easy, we're set. It may, it may get a little bit harder. It might, just a little bit harder. Is that okay? Somebody yesterday in the other class, we did this question in the other class yesterday, got a little bit further with them. Somebody asked a great question that nobody's ever asked me before, and to be honest, I've never noticed with this question before. I said, shouldn't the significant figures be, shouldn't significant, uh, sorry, um, oh, that shouldn't be 750. What should it be? What should it be? Yeah, 7.5 times 10 to the 2, right? 7.5 times 10 to the 2 kilograms meters per second. Because we've got two significant figures right there, the 3 meters per second. Good. I'll tell you what, if you have a little bit of trouble with significant figures, believe it or not, it's easier in physics 30 to deal with it. In physics 20, you get to use that. physics 30, on the exams, tell you ground your answer to this particular tell you pretty hard to make that thing unless you can count. Okay, let's uh, give you about five minutes to back up the questions here. One A and question number two. Let's see what you can do with those. Okay, let's take a peek at question number one here, uh, just for a brief moment here. Uh, this one says a 65-kilogram girl driving a 535-kilogram snowmobile at 11.5 meters per second at this funny angle of 60 degrees north of east. What's the momentum of the girl's snowmobile system? I know that some people, when they see this question, especially later on, actually, in Physics 30, after we've done some more vector analysis. You've done a lot of vector analysis in Physics 20. We do quite a bit more in Physics 30. Later on, once we've done some more of it, people see this question and they all of a sudden try to, try to do some kind of vector component thing, an X component, a Y component. You guys know what I'm talking about? Do you remember that? We don't need to do this here. Okay, we don't need to do that here. Because in the end, all we need to remember is that the momentum is in the same direction as the velocity. So if the velocity is to the east, the momentum is to the east. If the velocity is 60 degrees north of east, then the momentum is 60 degrees north of east, right? There's no components to do here. There's no x and y's or anything like that. It's just here's the mass, here's the velocity. It doesn't matter what the direction is. The momentum is the same direction. Is that okay? Question number two, okay, guys? The only real trick with that one is the rearranging, right? Okay, take the, uh, take the m over by dividing. V is equal to P over V, and we do the math, and we should get our answer there. All right. Let's do another example here right now. This one's not in your textbook. This one's a little bit trickier. Give you a second to copy that and to read through that yourself, and then we'll take a look at it as a group here. All right. We've all read this. We've all copied it down. Clearly, this is a momentum problem, right? It says, what's the momentum of the object as it hits the ground? But there's more to it, a little bit more to it than just that. And this is a perfect question to illustrate that the first thing that we do should not be write down the givens. We should give the question some thought first and then write down the givens. Okay? If we just write down some givens and look at what we're looking for, the momentum, right? We're going to say P is equal to M times V and then we're going to be stuck. What do we have going on here? There's really two things going on here. We want to find the momentum. So we're looking for the momentum, but there's also a fall going on. So the velocity is changing. When do we want to find the momentum? Oh, sorry, go ahead. 
when it hits the ground? At the end of the fall, right? So where do we want the velocity? The velocity is changing, right? It's zero meters per second at the beginning. It's something else partway through the fall. It's something else at the end. Where do we want the velocity? When it hits the ground. So let's get that. Okay, let's understand that we've got to analyze the fall. And then we want to analyze the collision with the ground. For the fall, we know the mass is 1.50 kilograms. We know the displacement is what? Close. Let's make it negative 14 because it's down, right? It's below where it started. So the displacement is negative 14 meters. Um, it falls from a height, so we'll say that VI is 0 meters per second. In the collision, what do we know in the collision? What's the speed in the collision? Oh, we don't know that, do we? What's the speed when it collides? The initial speed when it hits the ground? Don't know that. Um, what do we know? Mm, nothing, really, with the collision, right? Let's get the final speed of the fall. Let's get the final speed of the fall using Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad. It becomes 0 squared plus 2 times, what's a? It's falling under the influence of just gravity, so it's going to be negative 9.81. And d is negative 14.0 meters. Okay, let's score root that. And then let's get a speed here, a Vf. The final speed of the fall. I get 16.5735 meters per second. Do you agree with that? Anybody else get that? All right. So what is the velocity in the collision? What is the velocity down here? Well, we want to find the momentum, right? We want to find the momentum at the end. P is equal to m times z. What is v at the end of this problem? Isn't it 16? Is it 16? Or is the velocity at the end of the problem negative 16.5735? What have we just found there? What have we just found here? Not the final velocity of the fall, but rather we've found the final difference between vector and scalar. We found the final what? No, what's the 16 meters per second mean? Final what? It's the final speed, right? The final speed. The final velocity is what? Downwards, right? Speed just shows magnitude. The velocity shows direction. So the final velocity is negative 16. That means the final momentum would be 1.50 times negative 16.5735. We multiply those two numbers together. We get 24.9, or negative 24.9 kilograms meters per second. So we've got a fall, but we want the velocity at the the velocity, not the speed, the velocity at the end of that fall, not in the middle, not the average, not at the top. Okay, we need the velocity at a specific moment in time. And so looking for the momentum at the end, we need the velocity at the end. Yep. Uh, yep, absolutely, Simon. Um, instead of putting the negative there, negative 24.9, if you missed this, the fact that this is really speed, okay, but later on down the road you realize, wait a second, it's moving downward, so I'm just going to say 24.9 and write the word downward in, that would be fine. Yeah, absolutely, that would be fine. Most times, to be honest with you, on a test, most times you're asked, for the, in a question like this, for the magnitude of the final momentum anyways. And the magnitude is 24.9. Right? The magnitude doesn't have a direction. Okay? But if you are asked for the direction, we have to recognize that it's downward here. Okay? For me, that was the negative. For Simon, that was the word downwards. Okay? Both of them work. All right? All right, so multiple choice question up here right now. Okay, we've submitted these answers here, guys. Let's take a look here. It says a batter hits a fly ball 
a .130 kilogram baseball moves at a rate of 20 meters per second at a point where it's five meters above the ground. What's the magnitude of the momentum of the baseball the instant before it reaches the ground? Here's what I want you to do here first. Pretend you don't see those. When you get a numerical answer like this, we don't want to be thrown off by seeing the options that we have. What happens a lot of times is that we do something, we get halfway through a question, and we just quickly glance at the answers. We see what we have, and we think we're finished. Okay, we're tricked into sometimes not finishing a question. So don't look at the options until you've got an answer. Now, even then, it doesn't mean that you're going to get the right answer. But at least it means that you're not going to get tricked into stopping halfway through because you see what you've gotten partway through, an interim answer. Okay, so what's really going on in this question? I want to find the magnitude of the baseball. What's a key word here? Something that's really key so that we don't make a mistake here. Simon? Magnitude, sure. Okay. Although, really, if I got the direction as well, it would really be okay, right? I would just get a downward or an upward or, or whatever. So it wouldn't be the end of the world, but sure, that's important. What's a little bit more important, though? Tom? Momentum, absolutely. I mean, we absolutely need the momentum, right? If we don't solve for the momentum, then, you know, we're not going to get this right. There's something that's a little bit more subtle, though. Yeah. The instant before it strikes the ground. The instant before it reaches the ground. The temptation in this question is to say, look, I've got a mass and I've got a velocity. If you look at this question and the first thing you do is write down your givens, then this is what's going to happen. Multiply those two together, and you're going to get option C, and you're going to be wrong. Okay, that's a really common response to this question, right? We get too short-sighted here. We look at the givens, we write them down even. We're, good, we're smart enough to write down the givens, but then we multiply those givens together because it looks like they fit into that equation, but we get the wrong answer. What's wrong with it? Why is this wrong? What have we just found? Um, Tom, I think it was said we need to find momentum. Okay. We found momentum, so what's wrong with this? Who got a different answer? Who got a different answer than 2.6? You want to erase something there? There we go. This is like the last question we did, right? The example question we did. We don't want just any momentum. We don't want the velocity at just any time. If we want to find the momentum when it hits the ground, we need the velocity when it hits the ground. Do we have that? No. We've got the velocity when it's five meters above the ground. So we need to find the velocity when it hits the ground. This is the mass. This is the initial speed. Okay, the displacement will be negative 5 because it falls 5 meters down. We want to find the momentum at the end there, but in order to get that, we need the velocity at the end of the problem. And to get that, we're going to say Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2ad, just like we did in the last question. Except this time, Vi is not 0, right? This time it's 20. We're going to get a speed there of 22.318 meters per second. Now, that is a final speed, but since we're looking for the magnitude of the momentum, that's okay. We could put the velocity in there, make it a negative if we wanted, but we don't need the direction for our answer here. So let's multiply our mass, 0 0.130 times 22.318. Those two numbers together give me 2.90. The magnitude of the momentum is 2.90 meters per second, kilograms meters per second, before it strikes the ground, not at that point five meters above the ground. Does that make sense?
Well, since we're only looking for the magnitude there, we don't really need the negative. See, now, technically, if we're going to do that, that's, a, that's an absolute value. It's a magnitude thing, but we're not going to get caught up too much in that. If they ask me for the magnitude, listen, if I put the negative in, that's great, because the, the momentum is negative 2.9. But if I drop the negative there, since they're only asking me for the magnitude, it doesn't really matter. I get away with that. You'll never see a question that says, what's the magnitude of the momentum? One option is 2.9, another one is neg 2.9. It'll never say that. Do you see how important it is now to kind of look at the big picture here? Look at the question, not just the givens. What I'd like to do now, that we've had a chance to go over a couple of these questions, is give you a little bit of time to do some work now. So I'm going to give you uh, worksheet number one, which you've already gotten handed out to you earlier in the class. I want you to see what you can do with that. We probably won't take the entire class to finish that off, but we'll give you enough time to make sure that you're doing okay with this stuff before we move on, okay? So copy that out if you haven't finished copying it out. And then please take a look at worksheet number one in your booklet. All right, let's, uh, let's finish up that worksheet for homework, and let's take a look at one more example question for the day, and then we'll wrap it up. This one's a little bit different. 9.2 on page 452. Again, you don't need to copy out this question. Just reference it. Example 9.2, page 452, and then you can take a look back at it if you need to. Just read through this question. Take 30 seconds and read this question. See what it's really asking. Big picture again. All right. So we've got a question where we have a momentum here. We're decreasing a mass. We're uh, changing the, the direction of the velocity remains the same. We want to see what the momentum becomes. So we want to find a momentum, right? We want to find P. What's my big problem with this, though? Does anybody see a problem in their calculation of momentum here? I do. I don't know what m is, and I don't know what v is. Well, that's kind of important, right? If you want to find momentum, and it's m times v, and you don't know what m is, and you don't know what v is, what are we going to do? In this question, we're going to use a trick called variable value changing. Variable value changing means we're going to change the value of a variable in other words, we're decreasing the mass to one-third of its original amount. We're changing the value of a variable without knowing what the value was to begin with. What was it? It's a third of what it was, but what was it? If it was 90, a third of it is 30. Easy. But if we don't know what it was to start with, how do we use the fact that it's decreased to one-third of its original value to help us? Now, let me show you here. Follow these steps, please. The first thing that you're going to do is identify the relevant equation. What's the relevant equation here? Well, we're looking for momentum, so it's m times v. Okay, I told you just a second ago, it doesn't look like that's going to help me. But it will. In the long run, it will help me. Now, I'm going to put a little subscript beside the p. It's going to be an O. That stands for old or original. The original momentum is m times v. But the original momentum you can see up here is also 2.45 times 10 to the 2. So before I make any changes to it, that's what it is. This shouldn't be a real tough step for us, because this is just essentially writing down what we already know. The momentum is 245, and it's equal to m times v, exactly what our data sheet tells us. Here's the tricky step right here. What do you think the N stands for there? If O stands for old or original, N is going to stand for new. The new momentum. After I make my changes, after I decrease the mass to a third of what it was, what's the momentum going to become now? Well, understand this. I lied to you a little while ago. I said momentum is m times v. No, it isn't. Momentum is mass times velocity. That's the equation for momentum. 
mass times velocity. We represent mass usually by the letter m. We represent velocity usually by the letter v. And it's okay to write it as m times v. But really, it's mass times velocity. It's still mass times velocity, but now we're not going to call the mass m. Now we're going to call the mass, anybody want to take a stab at this? One third m. We have a new symbol for mass. Does that make sense? It's still mass times velocity, but remember, it's not the m that it was. It's a third of the m that it was. So my new symbol for mass will become one third m. My velocity hasn't changed, so I'm just going to leave it as v there. I'm going to pull the one third outside of the brackets. My new momentum is one third m times v. One third of my original mass times v. Paul, oh, but look at this. We know what the value of mv is. We wrote that down at the very beginning of the question. The value of mv is 2.45 times 10 to the 2. Look, mv equals 2.45 times 10 to the 2. Let's sub in 2.45 times 10 to the 2 for mv. So in other words, the new momentum is simply a third of what it was, 81.7. Kilograms, meters per second. Does that make sense? The big leap in this question, I'll get your question in one second here, okay? The big leap in this question is this right here. Specifically, actually, this right here. Momentum will always be mass times velocity. It's mass times velocity right here. It's mass times velocity right here. But down here, the mass isn't represented by m. It's represented by a third m because we changed its value. Maria? What does it say? Oh, it does. Oh, look at that. What's the second example I've done with you this year, and I already I made a mistake on it. OK. Thank you. Thank you for reading that more carefully than I did, Maria. It doesn't change the way we do it, but it does change our answer, obviously. All right, so thanks to Maria, we're going to go back and fix this up here. My new momentum is what? Well, it's still mass times velocity, but the mass is what? Maria? You're on the hook now. You find a mistake like that, you're on the hook, Maria. What's the mass now? Right. Still mass times velocity, but velocity is no longer V. Velocity is right. Thank you. Would you believe me, Maria, if I told you I made that mistake on purpose to see if you caught it? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Thank you, Maria. So that becomes 4 thirds m times v. So instead of saying, look, mv is 2, 245, let's divide that by 3. Let's multiply it by 4 thirds. So it becomes 4 thirds of 245. What does that give me now? 245. Uh, 327. I'm curious. I didn't make that mistake on purpose. I just missed that four times. Did anybody else catch that and just not say anything? Yes? Say something. Say something. Doesn't it make you feel good when you discover a mistake that the teacher didn't see? You can think for a minute that, hey, hey, I'm smarter than the teacher. And well, in this question, you were. Hey, there's a lesson in there, I guess. Read carefully. I told you guys, take a minute and read the question. What did I do? I just watched you guys to see when you were done reading the question. I didn't read the question. Okay, I got to do that, too. Okay. I got two examples for you to do here, two practice problems for you to do here. I want to draw your attention to one thing here, though, before I set you free on these, okay? I don't like the way this is worded here. In fact, 
it's worded so poorly, when they did the answer key to this, they actually made a mistake. They misread their own question. If its mass decreases by a factor of three quarters, what does the mass become? Yeah? So when you sub in the mass, the new mass, it's not going to be three quarters m, it's going to be one quarter m. If it's decreasing to three quarters of what it was, then we stick in three quarters. If it's decreasing by three quarters, it becomes one quarter, right? What do you think, what do you think they did when they did their answer there? they put in three quarters. Okay, so the answer to question number one here is going to be wrong. Okay, when you do this, just understand that. Okay. Here's your homework for tonight. Let's finish up worksheet number one, and let's take a look at the practice problems on page 452. Okay, you got, I got a couple minutes here to work on these, and then I just finish them up tonight, okay?